Hello everyone, Kent Bressler here. I want to welcome you to Kent's Kidney Stories. During our time together um, over these podcasts, I'd like to uh, discuss kidney disease. I'd like to tell you about my journey as a transplant patient, but also talk about dialysis, kidney donation, and just about anything else that might be of interest. Kent's Kidney Stories podcast endorsed and sponsored by kidneysolutions.org. Good afternoon. My name is Kent Bressler. I was with you for podcast one and we're going to continue on with our journey with kidney disease. I'd start with a short prayer. Lord our Father, I ask you for strength as I talk about kidney disease. So many are afflicted and searching for help. Grant them a degree of peace and understanding, and most of all, I pray that you will heal them. Amen. Well, it's been a great couple weeks in my life, but nothing better than to have my good friend Jason Nunez here Jason has an interesting story. I'm going to cut this to the chase. He's looking for a kidney. He's on dialysis and is in renal failure. And he's got a wife and two kids. And if you go on kidneysolutions.org, you'll see a nice little video about him and his family. I'd just like you to consider donating. Give him a chance to see his kids grow up and deal with the passions that he has. That's for his family and his church. And that's all I ask. And Jason, thank you so much for helping me with this project, but also with managing all of the monitoring and the producing. It's a, it's a joy to have you around. Well, Ken, uh, thank you very much for, for uh, advocating for me. <laughs> um, as you do, that's, uh, that's a, something that you're really, really good at doing is advocating and ha- having you as a part of uh, what I consider my dream team, if you will, um, is definitely a blessing to me and to my family. So I, I greatly appreciate that. And um, as far as for helping with uh, the podcast and this this project here that we're doing, uh, it's uh, podcasting I just love in general. So I'm definitely happy to help you. I definitely consider it time well spent. Uh, for listeners, if you are curious about my kidney journey and uh, are possibly thinking about considering uh, donating, I um, encourage you to go to utclivingdonor.com. That's U as in university, T as in Tom, C as in center, and uh, livingdonor.com, utclivingdonor.com. Uh, you can follow my journey as I kind of chronicle um, my future to hopefully what will be transplant um, at Facebook and on Instagram and coming soon to YouTube. At Jason's Kidney Journey. So you, you can find me on there. Uh, feel free to give me a like and follow me and come on this journey with me as well. Thanks, Ken. Yeah, you're welcome, Jason. You know, it, it just tickles me beyond belief that I, I'm actually sitting in a room with somebody who's going through what I went through. And it's it's a it's a travesty, travesty this kidney disease. It's 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 not good. But when you have received that gift, you have to work with it. So that's what we're doing. And and, uh, thank goodness you're around. Uh, I really do appreciate. And remember what we always said, that you'll never find that kidney donor. That kidney donor, the Lord will send that person to you. They are there, and he will release them to you at a given time. So bless you for what you're doing, buddy. You're you're worth your salt. Thank you. Okay. Okay. what I wanted to talk to you a little bit, first of all, is to tell you if you can, if you want to email, email, email me, please go through kidneysolutions.org. I'm listed on there, my email and my phone number's there. And also like us, Amanda and, and myself, on Facebook and Instagram and other social media sites. And uh, just look us up, kidneysolutions.org. Today, uh, I'm going to start out and 
just kind of give you a little background on my journey uh, like I did in the first part. Uh, here's a, a real interesting thing about undiagnosed kidney disease. You never look bad to others, but uh, you surely do feel bad from the inside. Every, everything that you do is labored, but most of the time until you're really diagnosed, you go unbelievingly through life with a disease that's lethal. Oh, it may not take you out in one day, and it may linger and drag on, but to the time you find out about it, once you have, you got to do something about it. So my journey started when I got drafted, and uh, they knew I had had that uh, protein in my urine, and nobody should have protein in their urine. We know that. And it progressed right on to transplant. And the transplant part of my journey was, I think, it was very, very easy. My doctor and I decided that we were going to do the transplant versus dialysis. And up front, I'll be honest with you, I didn't want to do dialysis. I didn't want to be burdened with it. And frankly, it scared me. But I made a firm decision, and thank the Lord, I had a great nephrologist. Dr. Mulgrew, who, who guided me through this. And that's what I would like to seek, have you seek out, is a good nephrologist, one you trust, one that shows great concern not only for your condition, but for you. In other words, you find one that will treat you and not the numbers. You got that kind of guy or gal, then you got it made. This is an easy trip. What was interesting about my trip is I had two brothers. And I can think back at the time when we went to the clinic the first day. And we were all there for testing and I was laying on the couch and my two brothers were sitting there telling jokes and cracking up like they, they always do. And the nurse came in and she looked around the room and she said, well, I can tell who's got the kidney disease in here. And that's what that's all about laying on the couch sleeping, no energy, just surviving. And my response to her is, I'll bet you can. Let's fix this. And let's fix it as quickly as we can. I don't want to wait around anymore. I'm sick. I'm very sick. And she said, we got you, Mr. Bressler. We're going to take care of you. So the story I'm going to talk to you about today is donating, but I'm going to call it the odd man or the odd girl out. And it's a story about how my two brothers, in this case, how the odd man that gets out, decided on who was going to donate. They both came down, both Kip and Kerry, from Nebraska to Texas and were immediately tested. And on the testing, when it was completed, they told Kip that he was the best match. And after the experience that I had had, my brother calling me, both of them, my youngest brother, Kerry, I could see in his face, I could see in his body language that he was taken aback because he thought in his heart that he was going to be the one that was going to give me the kidney. He's an extrovert, and he told me, I'm going to be the one. At that point in my life, all I could think of was, I just hope and pray that one of them's compatible. They both were. So when they just start, started discussing who was going to be the donor, they asked me, what do you think? And I said, I, I don't have any idea. You're both good. Kip's a little bit better, but that's a decision you guys are going to have to make. And they did. They sat for a good while afterwards, and we talked about it, and that was it. Nobody made a decision. And the next thing I know, in the course of probably about 24 hours, Kip came to me and says, Kent, I'm going to be the donor. Carrie and I talked. We had a lengthy conversation. 
Carrie's got two kids. I don't have any children. I've got to, I've got to do this, and I want to do it. And so there's your odd man out. And when we told Carrie, he was accepting. He's all in. He was going to stay with me for the ride. The takeaway point in here is you have this type of thing happen to you, don't forget the odd man, the odd girl out. It just means as much to them that you're well, but it's also, it's deflating them. It hurts them. Not, not physically, but it, it, does, it does cause consternation. And believe me, I hugged them both, but I gave Carrie an extra, an extra hug and said, you know what, all this time that we've talked and all the time that you've given me and considered to be a donor, that's not lost on me. And everything that we've done since then in the past 32 years has included Carrie. When I speak at groups or when I happen to be in, I tell people that Kip gave me a kidney. There's my brother that gave me a kidney. And I'm blessed because my second brother, he was a don could have been a donor, but the decision was made to go with Kip as a family decision. And he rests well with that. But it's very important to remember that that odd person out, their feelings are very, very important. They're a, they're a part of you just as if they had given you their kidney. And besides that, it brought us back to where we were very, very close. Now, granted, some of you won't have an opportunity to have a brother or a sister be available to give you a kidney. I understand that. But I might add that that just opens up the whole world to you. It doesn't limit you in the least. You get to go out in public and tell your story, and you get to go out and develop more friendships, and that the Lord's undertaking, will He will send that person to you, and it will be in, a, in a good timing. Okay? So rest assured that odd person, that odd man out, they're a blessing just as the guy who gave you the kidney. One of the areas that I've always said I was going to do podcasts with was to go talk about my journey and then talk about the topic of the day, which we've done. And then I want, in every session, I want to introduce one of my dear friends, you know, this journey that you're on, this kidney journey, whether you end up on dialysis and are unable to find a kidney donor, or whether you're transplanted and blessed like so many of us have been, you're going to meet a lot of great people, people that are concerned about the way you feel, the way you are, and they want the best outcome from you possible. And trust me, that gives you hope. Hope is, it's here on earth as it is in heaven, but hope springs eternal when you believe. And so friends are very, very important. And I'm, gonna, I'm going to, to try to tell you about one of my friends every one of these podcasts. And I'm going to dwell on them because they're special to me. I'll never forget them. So tonight, today, I'm going to talk to you about Kathy Bressler, my wife. Now here, here's, here's, the, uh, here's the background on this gal. First of all, we've been married for 50 years. Oh my, I was hell on wheels when I was uh, sick. She stayed with me. My kids stayed with me. But most of all, Kathy was a rock. She continued to work, she continued to pray, but most of all, she was always there. She didn't have to say anything, just her presence allowed me to get where I'm at and to survive this horrible illness. You know, we, <laughs> we met in the third grade, believe it or not, in a little farming community in Nebraska, standing on, in, in the classroom looking out across the playground, I remember this like it was yesterday. I had been sent by, to the school by my mom. She said, go meet your new teacher. Well, I was looking out on the playground and I saw this 
little gal walking up the sidewalk by herself. And I asked the teacher, who is that? Do you know her? And the teacher said, well, yeah, that's Kathy Luberstedt. She's moving in from the farm. Her dad lost the farm, and she's going to be in our class this year. Around the seventh grade or so, we started to be pretty close friends. Of course, the skating was, rink was a great place to come and hang out, and we, we, we skated together. And In principle, we were pretty much really close friends at that point in time and actually started dating when uh, I was a freshman. Uh, off and on, and then when I became, when we were juniors, we were pretty close, and we were married then a year after our, we graduated in 1968. And again, I tell you, it was, it was wonderful. This woman is, she's the best caregiver you could ever ask for. She's quiet. She's unassuming. She doesn't ask for anything. She doesn't compromise her principles. And she's got a huge heart that forgives and guides. She was never self-serving. She was always willing to try new things, and she still is. She was a great mother, but she loves her profession. She's a hairstylist, and let me tell you what, there's nobody better than her. She took care of me in the darkest times of my life. She never wavered. She was always there for me. Trust me, that's the kind of friend you want. And it's not that they're so friend to you. You've got to be a friend back. You've got to be able to put yourself in their position. What is it like to have to put up with you? And then you can adjust. I could tell you stories, but I think they're best left with us. So, thank you, Kathy Bressler. You, you've been great. And you gave me a chance to see two children, Gretchen and Celeste, grow up and now to see four grandchildren. And that's the key to transplant. That's the key to beating this kidney disease is to get in a position where you can see your life progress and you be successful. And it is Lord's will. It's Lord's guidance. But that's the most important thing. And that's, that's my best friend. And I got several more to talk about in the future. I hope you'll come back and listen to some of them because I've got some real characters. So let's wrap this up. I think it's short and sweet, as well it should be. I want to leave with this. I want you to be an advocate, an active advocate for yourself. Don't rely on anybody to take care of yourself. If you have issues with your physician, if you have issues with your wife, if you have issues, you fight them out. You take, take it to fruition, get it done right, but it all stick up for yourself. This kidney disease business needs an advocate, but you're your best advocate. The things you do, the way you carry yourself, the way you care for yourself, and the way you care for others is a reflection of how well you'll do with this disease or how well you're doing with it now. Stay busy. Take care of yourself. Do everything in moderation. And I mean everything. Your whole life should be a textbook of moderation. Don't be excessive or don't entertain compulsive behaviors. That includes with your diet. Make sure you're exercising. Make sure you're taking your medications religiously. You're maintaining your weight. And you're going to see your doctor. Don't miss appointments. Don't miss, if you're on, on dialysis, don't miss dialysis treatments. And I say don't, don't, don't because I want you to do, do, do. 
It's very important to take care of yourself and be your own advocate. I guess at some point in time you, you look back on your life and I've had 32 years transplanted and I can't think of one thing that's been more important to me other than my friends is my ability to stick up for myself and be my own advocate. You can be that way if you feel you can't. Give me a call. Let's discuss it. Let's don't talk about kidney disease. Let's talk about you dealing with it. How you can do it. Everybody needs a mentor. Everybody needs someone to bounce their issues off. Us at Kidney Solutions, Amanda DeLeon and myself are here. Go to our website, pick up our phone number, give us a call. We don't have all the answers, but if we don't, we'll find them out. And your best source is your physician. Don't pass up symptoms. If you feel bad, if things aren't going right, investigate it. Get it taken care of. Don't let it leak and go bad. Don't, don't make it get worse. Address it, take care of it, and then move on. So, thank you again, Jason. I appreciate your help. And uh, I don't know what in the world we'll talk about next meeting, but it'll be something. Hopefully, uh, everybody will kind of, that they've got a chance to listen to this, they'll give us an email. And we're there for you. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to stop talking now. And I want to thank you for listening. If you have, email me if you've, uh, if you've listened to this podcast. It's important to me. Not only for numbers, but I want to know who you are. I want to, I want to get to know you, and I want to help you any way I can. My last breath is going to be spent helping kidney patients. <laughs>